this is some population data that I've pulled from the town of Boone. Now, if you look, this is census data beginning in the year 1880 all the way through 2010. And you can see that the population was low. It went down. And if you take a look at some of the things that were happening in history, you might be able to find some explanations for the population going down a little bit. It starts to go back up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it and I'm going to take a look at it. So since these are such large numbers, what you would want to do is have a starting at zero. And so what we would do is I would click on this and I would say insert. And I'm going to say column to the right of that one so that I have a new column. And I'm going to call it year. But instead of doing it by 1880, I'm going to do zero. And then since this is going by tens, I think I'll just still go by tens. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on. So now we have a smaller scale that we can work with. So I'm going to copy it. So I'm going to highlight what I have and I'm going to hit insert chart. We're going to do this the same way we did before. Um, remember that we wanted to use the old chart editor and I'm going to go over here to chart types and I'm going to say scatter plot. So I'm still going to look at that. And I want to see if that looks like a line. To me this part looks like a line but this is a curve. So if I go down and I customize, and we talked about that R squared value, if I go down to where um, we see the math and I say I want to use a linear trend line like we did before, notice that most of my data is not on that line. I can go down and say show R squared and notice that it says it's at 85%. That's getting pretty far away from one. So there's probably another kind that might be a little closer. So if I go over here to linear and instead of doing linear, maybe I hit exponential. If I go and I look at the R squared value now, I'm getting up to nearly 93%. So that's a better fit. And Google has one other one that we don't really talk about. But if I hit polynomial, it's even better. It's at 98%. So you can look at those and you can see which one would be the best fit. And this one would actually be a better fit for polynomial. So let's go down and look. And it says trend line polynomial label I'm going to say use equation and so if I look at this one and I want to use this one it's telling me that my equation is 323 minus 52 times the x value and remember that the x value are my years plus 1.43 x squared so that's also the x value so if I wanted to make predictions using this one this is my equation and I'm just going to type it for you so that you can see again what it looks like but 323 minus, because it's plus minus, so we'll just say minus 52.9x plus 1.43x, and they do the little caret for squared. So that's my equation that I see right there. That's what we're using, and if I wanted to make a prediction, I would just plug an x value right there. So if I did this, I could say equals let's say I wanted to do the prediction for the next 10 years which would be 2020 which would be 140 I could do 323 times 140 minus 52.9 times well wait my x is not there sorry there's no x there so I wouldn't need a 140 there so minus 52.9 times 140 because there's an x plus and I would do 1.43 times and I would probably want to do parentheses here just to make sure that everything works like it's supposed to so 140 caret squared 
and then if I hit enter, it's going to give me a number of 20,945. So that's saying that in that year, and let's slide this over so we can see, this one was 17,122. It's telling me in the next 10 years the population should be 20,945. And that's if I use the polynomial one, which is the better R squared. So for this one, if I take it and I look at each one, the decision that I need to make is, which one is the best fit? This is linear, and it's 85%. This is exponential, and it's 92.5%. And this one is polynomial, and it's 98%. So it's a better fit than any of the others. Now, if I did decide that I wanted to use exponential for whatever reason, instead of the equation that I have down here, this is the equation that it gives me. And it's given me y equals... 350 times e raised to the 0 0.314 times x. Now, if you're not familiar with e, e is just a number. So what e is, and I want to pull up the calculator so you can see, e is just a number just like pi is a number. So you could get a fairly good estimate by just rounding, just like for pi, we usually round to 3.14. On this one, let me just type E in here so you can see what it is. But on my calculator, I do have an E key. I have, um, on this one, it's an E to the X key. Some calculators just have an E. Some have both, have the E and the E to the X. So if I wanted to know what E was, if I hit second because EX is green, and I type that, it has the E with the little box. And since I just want E by itself, the box represents just a 1 being there. So that's E to the first power. So that's simply E. And if I hit enter, it's going to tell me that E is roughly 2.72. So if you're taking notes, you need to make sure that you write that E is approximately 2.72. So I could go back now to my spreadsheet. Let's go back to what I have here. And if I wanted to make a prediction, here, let's make myself a little note. E equals... 2.72. It's roughly 2.72. So if I go in here and I did some math, I could say equals 350. And notice it has this E in here. So I'm going to do times, because they're squished together, that means times. And I'm going to put in parentheses 2.72 raised to the 0 0.34, and that's where the x is. So I'm going to put parentheses again, 0 0.314 times, and we're using 140. Over here is the x. Close out that parentheses and close out the other one, and hit enter, and it gives me this weird um, thing in scientific notation. And scientific notation just means move your decimal that many places forward. And so this is telling me that this answer is raise this, take this number and move this decimal 21 places to the right. So I would move my decimal 21 places to the right and it's given me a prediction of 44,000 and something. So this is not as good of a prediction. This one is closer. So on this particular one, instead of writing down this equation, which again, this is what you would give me as the equation if I ask you for the equation prediction for exponential, we would use this one, which is polynomial. It's a better fit because the R squared is better. So again, let's look at the R squared for polynomial. And it's just a better fit for this one. And we'll, I'll do another example with you, but this would be my preferred prediction for this one.